Hi, welcome. It's Milan with TuningIntoTheOne.com and today more about clarity in communication. Why? Because it's so important. We talked about getting in touch with the idea of communicating with peace and from a place of peace. But how exactly do we want to break that down? Well, this is the way it's going to work. Why? Because it's important to understand that when you have clarity on the background of how the communication can be presented, then you have choices. And you also have confidence to use those choices in the right circumstances. So here we go. Now, the Soulmate Attraction 3x3 three three Clarity Matrix outlined in a step-by-step -step way. So when you ask yourself key questions, make sure you're getting clear on what you want to communicate when it comes to the dating aspect, the relating or the relationship aspect, and the partnership mating and partner communicating, negotiating, and uh, agreement frames. So. The 3x3 three three Clarity Matrix is designed to basically help you ask key questions from a place of understanding, from a place of compassion, and from a place of choice. Understanding, compassion, and choice. So remember, we have filters. Along with filters, we also have the choice of knowing that we have an intention or a want of what we want to say and then there's the classic human psychological elements of having a voice so when we're looking at the biological filters then we can look at the social and the behavior filters or the behavioral filters and look for where we're different and where we're alike and then we're looking at energy energy in terms of what we have as thoughts, emotions, and feelings. So biological filters, social and behavioral filters, and energetic filters, or the energetic track or stream of consciousness that we're coming from. When we're coming from our thoughts, we're using more of a yang stream of consciousness. When we're coming from our emotions and our feelings, we're coming more from a yin standpoint, regardless of the plumbing. So remember, the biological filter would be the hunter. The classic idea of the male as a hunter also makes the male a problem solver. So as we're growing up in the male role model, what we're learning to do is communicate everything from a place of I'm looking to catch my prey, I'm looking to conquer, I'm looking to compete, and I'm looking to always solve problems. You'll notice that this is also a place in a space that's highly complementary and analogous to business. So when you look at modern business, it's the equivalent of the hunter and the caveman days going out there and catching the kill to bring home for the food, also as the warrior or protector. Then we have the gatherer which is really also a point of social connection. So when we look at biological filters, women really are the natural biological communicators. Men, on the other hand, are natural hunters, problem solvers, and competing hierarchy structure compatible. Women are the communicators. They're the social connectors. They're the gatherers. They're the ones that essentially communicate for the purpose of social bonding, for the purpose of networking. So those are the basic biological filters. Then let's get into more of the social and behavioral filters. Why is this important? Because you want to understand where you're coming from and where the other person's coming from. Remember, clarity, compassion doesn't come from <laughs> A place of ignorance it comes from a place of understanding so where are we different where are we alike well as men and women we have different plumbing plumbing as men and women we tend to be socialized differently men tend to be socialized to use language primarily as a problem-solving tool and women learn to use language as a social connection and 
building a sense of closeness, a sense of familiarity, and a sense of community. Then we add on the differences of nationality, culture, and where did we grow up? Did we grow up in a more rural environment and we're a country mouse? Or did we grow up in a more urban environment and we're a city mouse? If we grew up in a uh, urban environment, was it more of a middle class environment? Was it more of a blue collar or white collar neighborhood? Was it suburban? Uh, were we in more of a tough kind of neighborhood that people might even label as ghettos with gangs? Or was it more of a middle class neighborhood where maybe nobody locked the doors? A lot of times people say, I want to raise my kids in a safe environment, so we're going to move to a smaller place out in the country. So how you grew up and where you grew up is going to play a heavy role on what your model of the world looks like. And then we look at the energy track. So when we look at the energy track, what we're looking to do is really focus on are we coming from a place of thoughts or are we coming from a place of feelings? Are we coming from a place of what we want or, and what we don't want or are we coming from a place of what feels good and what doesn't feel good? Because that will determine the yang and the yin. The yang tends to be more based on wants and the yin tends to be based more on feelings. And then are we moving towards what we want or are we talking about away from what we want? So if our thoughts are focused, I don't want, I don't want, I don't want, you're moving away from what you want. If you're focused on what you do want, you're getting pulled toward it. If you're wor uh, working your way away from something, you're pushing away from it. I don't want to be fat is going to be a different energy track than I want to be lean and thin and physically fit. Your motivation is going to be different. The psychology to approach the situation is going to be different. Now we get to the second set of three filters, which is what do you intend or want to say or communicate? What do you actually end up saying or communicating? And what gets heard? What's received? What is the information that's actually transmitted? And how can you tell what's being interpreted by it? This is so important because when you think about stories being told from one person to the next to the next to the next, oftentimes by the time it gets to the third, fourth, fifth, or tenth person, you can't recognize the story. Basically, that's because what we want to say, what we say, and what gets interpreted or heard could actually be three different things. And then we have the basic psychological need since we were little tykes to have a voice, to be heard, and to have a level of acknowledgement. So what's the signals that are being sent for you to have a voice? Are they gentle? Are they calm? Are they more frustrated? Are they full of angst? Are they full of emotion and possibly lots of passion? Could be positive, could be negative. Uh, are you being heard? What's being received? This is very much along the lines of intending, saying, and what gets heard. However, it comes from a place of psychology rather than just information. The psychology is we all want to have a voice, we all want to be heard, and acknowledgement is important. So when your voice isn't acknowledged and you don't feel heard, you might come back again and again from a place of frustration. It might be a battle and you'll be combative and kind of saying, I'm going to pound this in there because the other person just doesn't get it. They don't get me. So I'm going to try different ways. Kind of like if somebody had a hearing problem. You try to speak louder and louder and louder. The same thing happens psychologically for us when we feel we're not being heard or acknowledged. We start taking different strategies that involve different approaches to communication and verbal and nonverbal. Violence, physical violence can be a mistaken way of people who are looking to be heard and acknowledged or who feel attacked and are defending themselves or are attacking you in return so that it's almost like the, the one with the bigger voice, the one with the bigger you know, bat, the one with the stronger fists wins. That's a result of conflict and conflict usually comes from one side or the other feeling like they're being taken advantage of or they're not being heard or they're not being acknowledged and recognized. So be aware of this three by three clarity matrix. It has everything to do 
with communicating from a place of choice, from a place of clarity, and from a place of confidence and empowerment. Now, when you get clear on why each one of these parts is important for you and the key roles they play in both your inner and your outer communications, now we can take it into a preferred form of communication when you know exactly what you want to communicate and then you come from a place of either um, communicating from a place of what I want and I'm being pulled towards it and I'm sharing the vision with you or I'm sharing from a place of what I don't want it's away from what I don't want and that framework is more of a negative push so here comes that construct which is basically either you're coming from a positive framework you're looking to be constructive you're talking about what you want towards the outcome or the gain that you wish to achieve and if you're speaking if you're speaking from your feelings it's from the feminine yin track and if you're speaking from your thoughts it's coming from your masculine yang track on the other side the complement for that is the negative framework it tends to be critical it focuses on what you don't want and it's away from a negative outcome you're looking to avoid or pain you're trying to either push away or not experience if you're coming from your feminine track it's I don't feel if you're coming from your masculine track it's I don't think so remember when you're designing your verbal actions or your physical actions or the physical set of uh, specific tasks that need to be done or goals that are set and have a uh, sub task elements that are action steps that need to be followed do they fit into the positive framework of what you want towards the outcome and the gain are you coming from a place of feeling or are you coming from a place of thinking or is it in the negative framework which is more critical to in terms of what you don't want away from the negative outcome that you're looking to avoid or the pain you're looking not to experience and then are you coming from I don't feel in your feminine or I don't think in your masculine because these are where you're going to be designing your recipe ingredients for verbal and nonverbal communication and action states action steps so you're going to be making statements about facts about your thoughts about your feelings about your emotions and you want to do this in an environment that is free of blame shame guilt finger pointing name calling or labeling so we're looking to move towards neutral languaging descriptive no fault sharing of information is the only effective long-term approach that will get through consistently and accurately to saying what you mean and being able to mean what you intend to communicate and then follow that up with an approach that is heard and acknowledged on a consistent basis and that's avoiding the the blaming piece when you do that you want to frame in examples like these I am experiencing blank because I experience blank because I experience pain because sometimes it seems like there is a really negative approach about telling me things that you want fixed and I feel that what you want fixed has to do with me so somehow to me that means I'm broken and you want me to fix myself so I am feeling picked on when this type of conversation happens and it makes me feel pain it makes me feel sad on the other hand you can say positive moments where you can appreciate I respect I acknowledge and I understand I commit to wanting to find a better way to dialogue can you commit to the same thing can you appreciate accept respect and honor my wishes feelings and thoughts you'll notice this parallels very much the five phrase script in more detail and then give your reasons or explanations so come from a place of neutrality talk about things in terms of what you're experiencing what you're feeling and how that is for you so that you can say when this kind of conversation happens where there's a lot of heated arguments I think there's a lot of blame being thrown around and finger pointing and that makes me feel uneasy 
uncomfortable, like I'm being picked on, like I'm being made wrong. And I would appreciate and respect if we could find a different way of taking this communication that's more neutral, that's more loving, away from our hurt, and more a communication from our heart about these important issues. Can you appreciate, expect, uh, accept, respect, or honor where I'm coming from? And these are the reasons why it's important to me. So remember, you want to consistently draw on your ability to have a statement that is neutral followed by your description of what's going on for you and then give your reasons or your explanations that express how important this is, how relevant it is, how significant it is for you without having to justify it and making it sound like an attack on the other person or having to defend yourself either against or towards the other person. So when you're neutral or when you're doing your best to be descriptive, that helps to be heard and acknowledged easily and effectively with kindness, with mindful words, and with love. When we attack or defend, then it's no wonder that it seems like people put up walls. Just like in warfare, people put on suits of armor to defend themselves while they're also attacking you, the same thing happens with words, energy, and actions. So the strategies, the recipes are to blend all this together into a specific format with the intention and the purpose of being listened to and being heard from your particular perspective or your point of view. So look at this in terms of do you want to design cooperative strategies? Do you want to design combative strategies? Do you want to design competitive strategies? Do you want to design critical strategies or do you want to design complementary strategies? All of these have a place. If you're talking about sports, you probably want to design competitive strategies. If you're looking at this as something like the legal system, which is designed on an adversarial format and so does politics, then maybe you want to come from a more combative or critical strategy. If you're looking to build bridges, if you're looking to build understanding, compassion, empathy, uh, a way of designing win-win outcomes, then we want to find complementary and cooperative strategies using our thoughts, our words, and our body language and having genuine emotions that come from our heart rather than our hurt and then we can achieve this so thank you thank you thank you this is an amazing place in a space where we can share so that's it and now I want to say thank you so much for being with us and that was a lot to swallow. Replay this a couple of times and look at it. There's a lot there. It's really good. It's really valuable. And you'll really be able to learn from it. Again, just like anything else, try it a little bit at a time. Pause. Take some notes. Digest it. And then move on. Until the next time, this is Milan wishing you amazing dating success, relationship mastery, and an intense desire for insight, understanding, and empathy to come from your heart rather than your hurt. As always, please come join us in our private group. You'll find the link on this video or right below it. And this is Milan saying bye for now.